Hey guys, so my name is Booksy, and I am uh, an ape, if you will, that's in Ater, A-T-E-R, stock. Um, and I'm just going to make a video today talking about my theory on the cycle of this stock and what it might mean for us going forward if you're in this stock. Um, whether you're in it for a squeeze play or a swing or whatever, um, this is still good information, I think, to have and to know. Uh, you should definitely do your own DD. I'm not a financial advisor by any means, just a guy um, who noticed a pattern and then went a little crazy and, and charted it out. So, you know, I, there's going to be folks that don't agree with this, um, that think I'm just crazy, like making stuff up. But I think, I think I'll make a pretty convincing case today on how this stock has moved in the past and how it might move in the future. So without further ado, um, I'm not going to talk about too much with like fundamentals for this stock and I'm not going to talk a lot about the buying and selling of this stock. I'll do that maybe in another video. Um, I'd also like to get into volume. This is a volume indicator down here, the VFI uh, underscore LB, and this is one that helps with momentum. Um, but I might talk a little bit about that as we look at the stock and switch between time frames, and that's why I've got it pulled up. But largely, I'm just going to focus on the TA. So basically, we're right here. Um, today is November 8th. Uh, it looks green today so far, and more than likely, um, we're going to see maybe it poke out of this wedge a little and then retrace back down. Um, that's not me being bearish. Um, it, I really am not bearish on this stock at all. I'm very bullish on this stock. I think there's good reason to be bullish fundamentally, but also um, just in terms of the technicals, you can see I've already kind of got my uh, idea of what may happen, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but let's go ahead and start at the beginning. So here's what I noticed with ATER, is that there seemed to be this like consistent fractal that appears and I actually noticed it when I started looking more deeply into the technicals. I kind of zoomed out. You, you know, when you don't see any of these indicators, you may see some of these and you might not think a whole lot about it. Um, but when you really look at the last two moves, you know, let's say back here that started on, a, you know, May 6th, right around the earnings call. Um, and then we're on another earnings call right now. And we are, without coincidence, very close right and another earnings call right here to these drops and you you might look at these and think well those are just drops because they didn't have good earnings so they sold off um, but I started noticing that this, this pattern seemed to appear in a lot of different places and so I took a fractal of this section right here uh, and it turns out that it lined up pretty well on the you know four hour and one hour time frame if you look at it and this is not exact, and that's not the way you're supposed to look at fractals. Fractals are indications that there's probably some algorithmic trading going on, right? It's not human, They're not humans, because humans don't trade the exact same patterns over and over. And fractals are more about the direction. So down, right, up, down, up, down, right, up. And you see how they're like testing these different levels as they're stepping it down, okay? Um, this is like an institution that's checking, right, these different levels and sort of walking it down. And um, and then here we have some consolidation, right, followed by a little bit of a bull run, but then it's shot down immediately. And what's interesting about this bull run is this is actually like an inverse fractal of this fractal right here, um, where you have basically a pennant that forms a downward channel that forms and then it breaks down into this kind of W shape and here we had it a little pendant that formed and it broke up and created this sort of W shape if we were to zoom in um, and it looks more like a U here but it does kind of bounce and bounce again um, and then we have these specific points where you know this stock will kind of dip and I just sort of noticed that it wasn't it didn't seem random you know it seemed kind of calculated um, and so what I did is I went back here and I took 
a fractal, um, and I, I, I took a fractal from, you know, maybe here to here, and I just sort of started playing around with it, and I noticed that it just appears everywhere in the stock. And so if we do that right now, we take a bars pattern, let's say just from here to like here. Maybe not this one, hang on. Let's take a bars pattern of just this kind of run right here with the dip. And then let's come over here and if we look at this on a um, a smaller time frame, so I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this, shrink this down. Oops. Okay. And again, this is not like exact. You're not looking to find a perfect match for this. It's more about what the motion looks like. Okay. What's happening, right? When this occurs. Um, behind the scenes. And so if I go to like a one hour, maybe I might need to get a little smaller. Um, I think you're going to see where I'm going with this pretty quick here. Uh, check this out. So let's move this one up because this is like a bigger time frame. And by the way, fractals are kind of strange because again, they sort of indicate repeating patterns, right? And sometimes the pattern will be flipped like if I were to flip this over, it might match right here, right down and then up. But a lot of times they're just repeated um, the same way over and over on different time frames. So look at right here, you have this wedge. You see that? And this is what I started noticing is that I just saw this pattern everywhere on the stock. Um, where you have a wedge, okay? And then it's followed by a breakdown and then immediately retraces to the top of that wedge and like retests it. And then often it breaks out, creates a second, look at this, this is crazy. Um, it breaks out, creates a second um, W, or the second part of the W right here, and then it starts a new wedge, all right? That should look very familiar because if we zoom out, let's go back to the daily or the four hour, doesn't really matter. Um, it looks exactly like what we see over here, where you have a wedge, it breaks out, it tests, okay, it breaks through that, that previous uh, diagram, and then it retests it, and then starts a new wedge. And so this is what brought me to, brought it to my attention, all right? So I'm gonna get rid of this fractal, because we are gonna see it a lot, but I'm not gonna like keep pulling it up. All right? If you don't believe me, just looking at that thing, um, you know, uh, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, to me, that's it's pretty obvious. I'm gonna get rid of these two for now. But uh, I guess some folks, you know, are, are not visual, um, and, and they may think, well, yeah, but that's just you know normal trading. I don't think that's normal. I think that's something that's happening repeatedly. Either is sort of like self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, if it's retail, as with a lot of patterns, but certainly at this scale. Uh, micro and macro, it's definitely computerized tradings. And so when I talk about an algorithm, um, I'm talking about like a composite man, right? Like I know that's something that Wyckoff talked a lot about, but I'm just talking about the composite man as like all of the algorithms acting together. It could be one institution that has like a lot of money um, that's acting on the stock, or it could be multiple institutions, um, multiple people who are trading the stock, uh, who want to see it, you know, play out a certain way. So there's not like a set person. Like I couldn't point to one institution and say, this is the person that's doing it, especially because I think a lot of these moves are massive short positions opening. And I'll get to that in a minute. So basically what I did is I started tracing it back. Um, I was wrong in the beginning. I thought it was because I counted back from really these drops. I thought it was an earnings call thing. But the earnings don't always fall on even increments. And in addition to that, um, it didn't really work. Like So after like three cycles, uh, it started changing. And I, I, it took me a while. I spent about a day kind of reviewing this. Um, but I figured it out. Okay, and it, it, it actually starts the day, the second day this stock was open um, with this sort of sell-off. 
okay? And if this could just be um, selling, but you know, obviously you, you don't have more than a day to buy the stock, which means that probably, right, unless it's insiders who are just selling it off right when they get it, uh, day one, this is probably shorting, okay? And I'm just very, I feel very confident um, about this, this cycle at this point. Um, it, it started with sort of a small term cycle, and each of these is exactly 46 bars. Um, and all of these 46 bars are, um, hang on a second. So I'm just I've just removed after hours trading, um, extended, right? So basically, what I noticed is that this is 46 bars repeated, and it, and if we start with the presumption that this is the first cycle, then the cycle is actually a dip, okay? That that establishes it's a dip and a a dip and a rip, right? It's a it's a U, right? That establishes this 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 falling wedge or this rising wedge as we'll see and then it starts by a breakout of that wedge or it finishes with a breakout of the wedge and then it resets and creates a new wedge and I noticed that this first cycle took exactly 46 bars um, and it was about 10 bars um, before this end right before the reset that this wedge breaks and so if you look here it's I'm gonna have to scale a little bit as we go but if you look, you can see this pattern, right, where there's a, a wedge that is created, it breaks out of the wedge, it tests the wedge, and it runs back and creates a new wedge. And then that wedge can sometimes be defined right in the beginning. There's like, some of them have like one or two wicks that are very extreme. Others, it has to sort of like discover a bottom, right? And this is the pattern that I've noticed is that at least initially, um, and usually when it's um, in more of a bearish pattern, the bottom of the wedge, or excuse me, the bottom of the wedge is kind of aligned with the previous support, right? The previous like tip. This is not always the case. You can see right here, like maybe if I redrew it, and I'm not going to redraw it, but you can kind of see it sort of doesn't really match. This one's more dead on. Um, it's not exact, but oftentimes it points, right? And I think that's just because this is like a natural support, um, like psychological support. So it's where the buyers are going to step back in um, after these breakouts. So, you know, after these falls, the buyers will step back in right here because it's a previous line, right? A previous technical line. So that's what I think that is. I don't think it's always consistent, but it has been, you'll see, pretty consistent. Um, there's a couple times where it doesn't do it. So anyways, we've got 46 bar cycles and then it changes. Now this is COVID right here. And I think that what happened with COVID is that it broke out early because, um, during the, these other two cycles, cause this 74 bar cycle, which begins on December 26 repeats three times, just like this cycle repeats on a macro scale. I'll come back to that later and I'll let you know what I think about that, but just looking at these three, I noticed that these two were like 14 to 15, depends on how you measure it, kind of right in between them, right? 14 to 15 bars before um, the repeat of the cycle, this would break out of the wedge. And that makes sense because here on a smaller time frame, right, 74 versus 46, it was compressed. So this was 10 and this was 14 or 15. And so it makes sense if it was stretched out that we would increase by four or five days, okay, um, when you're increasing the total lifespan of the cycle. Now here it broke out early, and you could say like maybe it was really here, um, but it, it really started breaking out very, very early. It got very violent right in this area, and this is right when we were dealing with all the COVID fears, and this was a big market sell-off, and almost all the stocks in the market looked the same, okay? All the stocks had this horrible dip. Um, kudos, I guess, if you bought in here, uh, but a lot of people were just selling off and not sure about what was going to happen, okay? And so even the volume is not super high in this area, but it did pick back up when everyone was like, oh, there's a lot of indication that we're going to see a market rebound. And this starts a, a bull run, 
Okay, so really in the beginning, we don't have much of a bull thesis for ATER. It's, um, it's something that appears to be, you know, pretty low volume on the whole. I mean, we're not talking big numbers here. Um, maybe a million or two million a day. Some days, you know, have a little more or less, but um, there's not... Actually, none of these look like a million. I'm not sure where that came from. I was looking at down here. Um, these are pretty low volume. So clearly, whatever you know, company is running this thing is not um, these algorithms is not really concerned about this being you know a bullish stock. I think they're they're looking at this as overvalued. Uh, they probably want it to be lower. Um, this is going down. All right, and there are some other indicators that will show like the accumulation distribution indicator would show that you know this was heavily being distributed being sold um, on the whole as opposed to being bought um, and now I'm not going to get too much in the volume right now but you can just see there's more red bars than green bars okay but right here it changes sentiment changes with this stock and it does go into a bull run which is pretty significant. It goes from like a dollar fifty up to like fifty dollars, um, basically, and so that's a huge bull run, a massive increase in price. But I'm really just looking at these cycles, thinking like, well, what what's changed? And not much has changed. This one actually did point to, you know, that support. It created a new trend, um, and now we have this bull run. And in this bull run. Um, the breakdowns still happen. You know, this one's a little odd. It has like two breakdowns, and I think it's mainly because it's testing this major support. Um, and then there's like kind of, of a third loop here before it sort of settles. Um, but really, this is kind of the wedge. And you could redraw it, you know, if you were being more conservative, um, the new wedge, to be more like this. And it doesn't really matter um, because either way, you know, it was trying, uh, it, it couldn't maintain this momentum, all right? Uh, it was just too much, and it just it needed to sell off. Um, and here we see, like, some consolidation. It's, it's more or less flat, and then you see a little bit more of a return to the form. Um, but again, pretty convincing, right? You see this sort of wedge pattern. You know, this one has some variation, but we got return to the wedge pattern, breakout, establish a new wedge turned the wedge pattern and we broke out and we established a new wedge. This one I actually drew upside down. I don't, I think if you look at it closely, you can actually see right here, there is a bit of a dip. Um, and you could draw it like this. If you look at that as a continuation and that's fine. And there's actually another smaller dip in there as well. Um, but I think that overall, like this is an invert inversion. You can see it kind of turns, all right? And this is a big point in the SOC because this is when it goes from being bearish to being, or excuse me, being bullish to being bearish. So here we have a new cycle. And in this cycle, you've got 67 bars, 67 bars, 67 bars. I'm calling this the medium cycle. All right? And this also repeats three times. And essentially, these repeat on this second U. But there are some instances, you know, where it's not quite perfect, and I think this is one of them. Um, if it were to reset on the second U, then you would have to draw it maybe here. And you would say, like, well, that's my second U, um, where you get this low. And this is all really just, like, one action. And it just kind of overextended off the U. And I think that's va valid, too. Because, again, this lines up a little bit more with our theory here. Um, but I'm just kind of drawing what I'm seeing and I'm not super worried about it being perfect because again, this is changing and at this point we now have a bearish cycle. So this one is kind of like the last wedge to really sort of point to a top and then we're going to switch and the wedges are going to start pointing to um, bottoms again because it's bearish and we saw back here where it was bearish it was kind of pointing to the bottom where we would have this kind of rally and there you go now you might be looking at this saying well yeah but this one didn't point to a bottom and I, I would say you're right it didn't and we didn't actually even go back down uh, even remotely close to testing this after we bounced off of it right here 
So we did test it, but um, we never came back. And I think there's a reason for that. And that reason is this white line here. And then also the fact that the ape community got into this stock right around this point and we got this massive volume increase. So that being said, um, what do I think is happening? And why do I think this is important? Well, I don't think, I think if you look at this, you might say that maybe I'm wrong about there being a repetition, but it'd be really hard to convince me anyways that this isn't some kind of a cyclical pattern. Um, and I think what's happening is pretty clear. Basically, as we, um, we saw sort of in the beginning, there's a short that happens, okay? So let's go to like a more recent example here, all right? We'll just talk about a couple different examples. So there's a, a bearish and a bullish example of this. So this is a bullish run, all right? And in the bullish run, this would be a sell-off, okay? And then another sell-off, sell-off, another sell-off. Okay, and these would be essentially institutions saying, you know, I'm, um, I'm getting out of the stock or I'm just shorting it. And this is what I think is happening. They're shorting the stock so that they can then cover, right? So if they have enough power to short it and drop the price, they can make a quick profit and then they can start accumulating again at a slightly lower level. Because if you're an institution and you're, you know this algorithm has worked in the past, what you're going to do is essentially, um, on these resets, you're going to immediately just dump the price and you're going to get a good price. So you're looking at sentiment. This is $9.45 right here. Okay, you know the earnings call isn't going to be good, right? Because maybe they just haven't had good earnings calls and you're just kind of anticipating a sell-off. So you, you, you start the sell-off, you wait for people to respond, all right? This is a bear trap. Right, because then bears are thinking, oh, it's going to fall. Look, it's going to drop down. Okay, um, but you're just doing it to make a quick buck. So you start the sell off with a short position. Um, the bears drive it down a bit. When you see it consolidating, the algorithm starts kicking in. You start covering those short positions. You just made a buck from 950 down to, you know, 690. And then you also can buy and accumulate down here as well in this seven dollars. 20 cents range. So you get profit from the short position. Um, you get bears lumping in here thinking that it's going to go down. All right. And then you also get the ability to accumulate. So then you cover your short position, right? And you start buying again. And this thing starts rocketing. And bears flip out, they cover, and it starts going again. And then you make a big, big profit on a massive run. Okay. I think this run. Um, alone was, you know, 600% or something ridiculous, right? Um, and then when it gets to a certain point where you start seeing maybe uh, volume exhaustion, you see how this is kind of like rounding out, all right? And you know that you've got this wedge that you're creating, right, that you've been trading inside of. Then you do another, you do it again, basically, right before you're going to reset the algorithm. Before it resets, you dump it. And in this case, all right, in this case, your buyers stepped in in force when they saw the price drop. And so in this case, you know, where there's a higher volume, the, the, the algorithm didn't really track as well because buyers stepped in and really like wanted this thing to go, which leaves you less time to accumulate. So the sell-off was a lot faster and then volume picked up, whereas here it was very slow, right, methodical. And they would have had a lot of time to accumulate stock if they wanted it in bits and pieces and then also sell off their short positions. Um, here it would happen pretty rapidly, and I think that's why we saw this really fast um, run up to test this major trend. Um, but then, you know, things change and you can tell that the momentum was dying. There's other volume indicators that really show this better than this one. Uh, and I'm going to do a separate video for that, but basically momentum starts dying and then boom, right? Institutional sell off again, because we're resetting. And this time we're going to do a bearish trend head down. Um, and it works. Okay. It works very, very well. Um, it works all the way up until about here. Right. And on this one, it's very interesting because these sell-offs are massive. All right, if you look at the if you look at the bars like right beneath where these 
um, sell-offs occur, they're usually big spikes, okay? Not always, um, but they are. It depends on like how much counter volume, if you will, is in the stock. But usually you can see there's a, a big red bar um, or a big green bar. And it's just an indication that, you know, obviously somebody is dumping a lot of shares, good or bad, on the stock, okay? Um, and sometimes they go different ways. It doesn't really matter. The point is that right here we have a $3.1 million day, okay? And right here we have a uh, $9 million, almost $10 million day, right? And what's interesting about this one is that it ended up green, and that's because um, this giant sell-off was followed by a huge uh, amount of accu accumulation. Somebody saw the writing on the wall and thought that this was dropped too low and needed to, you know, and it accumulated it. Um, basically, like, the only thing that really is noteworthy about this section is that this happens about 15 or 16 bars, which, interestingly, is earlier. And I think it's, it's an indication that volume, if you see it, look right here, volume is like on the rise. So this stock's getting more volatile um, in comparison to previous times, right? Like you see how much volume, like this float has increased a lot from like down here to all the way up here. So I think the volatility has increased and that's why we're getting these bigger swings in these channels and then also um, an earlier break of these channels right here and here specifically. These have been like the most high volume times up to this point. Now something interesting happens of course which is that the ape community really takes notice and starts looking at the stocks as a potential for a short squeeze and if you look at this region you know it's pretty obvious where the ape stepped in really right around um, August 27th maybe even a little bit later maybe on the second run a lot of apes were like yep this is a good idea um, and they got in. Well, the institution, whatever the algorithm is, this composite man algorithm, that's causing, whether it's one or three or a dozen, doesn't really matter, that's causing this pattern to repeat in cycles, it kept going. It didn't stop. And what's interesting is that this is like a 500% run. And I think that whoever is running this, like the institutions that see this, they're not going to stop. I think they're going to continue to keep going. And I think this is proof of it. They did not stop on this drop. I think that the massive volume spike before, right here, this is really interesting to me. Because I think this is where the apes really stepped in, where the volume just drastically increased. I think this is maybe early birds, right? Or institutions that sort of knew this was maybe going to take some, get traction, right? Um, it just, it's a huge increase in volume on this particular drop. And you might say, well, that's kind of like tinfoil hat, and you're right, it is. I can't prove that. Um, I did look behind the scenes, and uh, there are some bigger bigger whales that were buying in at this time, but, you know, I can't, I can't prove that somebody knew that the apes were going to pick it up. I just can't. I just can't. In some ways, you could just say, well, you know, this is coming back to really low lows here, and maybe people are just buying it up. But not all of this is buying. Some of this is massive shorting, right? And I think that's the big thing here is that this is a huge attempt to knock this stock down. It was a 62% drop. This was a 41%. This was a 20%. And previously, the drops were not that dramatic, you know, 10, 15%. So again, something, you know, happened. And I think if you were to look at this in combination with, short interest, um, probably shorts were just dumb piling in, right? Like institutional shorts, other shorts, and they saw this as a, this drop as an opportunity to just drive the stock down more. Um, but I think, again, that the institutions that are running this play did not take a loss on this at all. Um, I know that people are thinking, well, they're covering, right? If this is like a 500% run, um, and they're being forced to cover and break even. Maybe they're they're losing money. But the truth is, the institutions that have been playing this, they're acting here, right? Um, they're pushing that stock down, and they're covering their shorts down here. Like, that's where they've been doing it, and they're covering and buying, and they're causing these 
runs. And I mentioned earlier over here that these were bear traps, right? And these would be considered bull traps because here you have these little bull runs going and you get these spikes, right? See this giant <laughs> short boom, right? And then here they're buying back in and then they're basically just buying in here and they're letting bulls sort of take the reins and see how high they can drive the price. And what they're doing is, remember how I said I think they were accumulating down here in this area? I think that they're waiting um, for bulls to sort of finish this price move, and then they're just dumping right here. They're selling right at the high. So they're making a profit on the way down. They're covering their shorts here. All right, they're buying here, and then bulls are taking it up, and then they're selling, and then they're starting it over again, right? Um, and I think this is kind of where... We have, as the ape community, um, kind of like short-sightedness. We think that because we are unified, and we are unified in, in some regards, that we're going to just make this thing go to the moon. Um, but that didn't happen. Right here, this massive sell-off, okay, you can see right here this volume indicator even went from a negative, right, um, to a positive for a minute. And it looked like it might continue to go positive in terms of positive momentum, right, bullish momentum, um, but it failed. And I think you look at these red bars, I think it's a little bit of retail selling off swing traders, right? Some of the bulls that got in here saw a little bit of that. But I, I think that a lot of it right here, um, this is the key point. I think this is where apes were thinking that this was going to go. And there was even this like other triangle um, which I think a lot of people were looking at and it was kind of like I was looking at it too thinking that this triangle right here you know was gonna play out and that we would see a bounce here we did right? and I thought we were gonna see another kind of retrace up to here and then maybe bounce and then break out and that didn't happen um, and I think when that didn't happen oopsie I think when that didn't happen a lot of um, a lot of the people who were maybe bullish on the stock or apes who were bullish on the stock got out, right? And they saw this breakdown, more selling, okay, a few days, and then it kind of recovers on this line, this support right here, um, which I believe is a Fibonacci retracement line, if I remember right. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's close. Um, yeah, that right there was the 618 right here. And so everybody thought, well, I thought too, I thought maybe when it gets over the 618, if it holds, it would keep going. When it broke down again, I knew it was going to go down to the 786. And now we're in the exact same position, right, where we're underneath, we're kind of like right here, we're underneath 786 on this retracement. Um, and I think a lot of people are really bullish on it because, you know, the apes have a way of draining shorts out of a stock. And I think that's true. And if you look at the volume, you can see that it did decrease and it's basically been pretty flat. And it's not gone down that far, like relative to where it came up from, about half, it's still, well, we're not halfway, but we're about at the 786. So not awful. However, um, if we were to look at, and this has been a 5% green day so far, but we've had those green days before. This was an 11% green day. This was a 2%. So we had a, you know, we've had bull runs before within this pennant. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to break out. Now, if we did, um, maybe it would be that, you know, I drew this wrong. And maybe right here is actually the first, it's possible, maybe right here is the first break of, and we actually see us go past it and then go back above. That's certainly a possibility. Um, I'm not perfect. I'm just looking at these patterns, trying to figure it out. I think based on just the fractals, what's more likely is that they want more downside um, and that we might see something more like this where it bounces really hard right here Okay, and it kind of hits the top and then crashes. So like it comes up, boom, and then crashes, and we see this swoop occur. 
Now, assuming that I'm getting this all right, um, this kind of leaves me at the end of this particular video. I don't want to go on anymore. Um, but basically, if this is correct, then we've had three short cycles, three long cycles, three medium cycles. I think this, this, and this are indications of like testing the waters, like trying to maximize profitability. And what's really interesting is that 67, although it's not a perfect average, does come, you know, right in between these two. And I think that if you're looking at like low end, high end, and then kind of trying to find the sweet spot um, of how quickly we repeat these cycles, I think it might be either A, like what's the most profitable for said institution or said composite institution, and B, um, what the market kind of feels for the stock is correct. Okay, it's a pretty young stock, only a couple years old. Um, but it's really clear to me that this pattern has repeated. Um, and I think that it starts, the cycles start on the drop um, that occurs right before. So the second W that occurs, the second part of the W that occurs right before the, the new wedge. Now on a macro scale, um, obviously, you know, you can look at this and say, like, just look at this area. And you can say, well, this is a widening channel. Widening channels usually have violent breaks up or down, depending on if they're bearish or bullish. In our case, we broke out, and then we've been riding the top of this channel. So one thing that you might say is, well, perhaps this is going to be a change of the pattern, and that's certainly possible. I'm not, I'm not going to rule it out. If it happens that the pattern changes, um, I don't think this is wrong. I just think that the pattern changed. And I know that sounds like confirmation bias, but... I mean, this is it. It's here. This is data. It's right there. It's it's just me doing some technical analysis and watching how this thing has moved. Um, but if it doesn't change, then we only have a couple different options. We have one option, which is that we can just guess, right? That it repeats one pattern that's already existed. And then the second option would be that it just starts a new cycle with like, maybe not 74 bars or 67, but maybe it's like 65 or it's like 70 like it's trying to find that perfect sweet spot and it's kind of bouncing like a you know whipsawing as it gets closer to that that that's that spot right that's possible so what i did is i looked at the average breakout time for the 74 bar and the 67 bar and this is what i came up with um this is the 74 this is the 67 actually i guess i deleted my line on accident um but it stops right here let me go ahead and put that back in there. Okay. Stops right there. And I'll make it yellow. Okay. And then I trace back 15 or 16 from there, and then 14 or 15 from there. And so basically, like, I'm just looking at these as estimations. This is not perfect. Again, these don't always break on time. And depending on volume, sometimes they break out way early or way late. Um, but most of the time it's usually earlier than later. Um, but basically like, I think that what's gonna happen is we're gonna see maybe a little bit of a bull run. Um, we're getting a little bit of momentum. If you look down here, the volume, um, if you look, it's pretty flat. And then if you look, the red days are, are starting to dwindle. So we have like five red days in a row, and we have three, now we have two. Um, some of these indicators, Again, I'll do a more thorough volume analysis. Some of these indicators are kind of teetering right around, like flipping. So I think we might get a little bit of a bull run, uh, and then I think we're going to experience a restart of the cycle. I think we're going to experience the last sort of dip before we move up. And again, that dip can be very flat. Um, it could look like almost nothing, or it could be really dramatic. It kind of depends on what price these market makers want, not market makers, but these institutions, um, this composite man, whatever it is, what price they want and whether or not, you know, they get it. Okay. Um, but I think best guess, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to predict the future is if this is already the dip right here, then what we'll see is we'll see it move up. Um, it'll break out. And then it'll come back down quickly to test here. 
So we might see something like this, where uh, if this is the dip, and this would be really early, and I, if this is the case, we might be on an early cycle. Maybe it's restarting the whole thing. Um, but maybe we see it break out, just like it did here. Okay, it comes back down, it retests this triangle, and then it just goes like a rocket. All right, and bulls come back in, shorts cover again, and it goes up. In terms of where it's going to go, I don't have no idea. Uh, I think there's some natural levels here. If you look at right here at the $21 level, I think that's pretty close to where we would probably expect to see it go um, without much resistance, just like we did here, you know, uh, here. But I think once you hit that level, it's kind of like, who knows, like the sky's the limit. If it were to break that short term, obviously we're looking up here at these levels that were established um, way back. And we would want to, you know, maximize, look at the all-time high of like 47, 48. If, however, um, and this is kind of what I think because I'm looking at, I'm looking at this like holistically as much as I can. And I think there's been times where it's kind of dipped below the wedge without actually breaking it. So if, however, this is a wedge and it breaks down later, and let's say that our estimations are pretty close to correct. Um, you kind of already saw this, this is the way I had drawn it, but basically I think you could see a dip um, that's more prolonged. Um, it could be fast. I mean, it could happen like really quick. I think if, if the apes do jump on, if this gets any momentum with retail, um, you might see something down to here. This was a previous kind of sticking point and then, you know, a pretty quick run. Um, like this, perhaps, okay? If it takes longer, um, we may be looking at like a greater dip. It just depends on how exhausted the selling gets. And right now the selling is looking relatively exhausted, but you gotta understand like this thing has been going down for a long time. And if they have the ability to just dump synthetic shorts on it whenever they want, um, and there's constantly, like every other day, there's like another million shares that's available to borrow. So I don't even think they're using a lot of synthetics necessarily. I think that they're just borrowing shares that are being made available. Because um, a lot of the data is showing that they're, they're putting out like a couple million every other day, to, you know, new shares to borrow. But I mean, look at these. These are pretty substantial, you know. Um, one and like, This is a lot. 2.7 million, you know. Uh, 3.1. I mean, and these are each like a million in this range. So this is a lot of shorting, a lot of selling pressure. Okay, and we've come to this point here where maybe we're sort of like the powers that be are sort of looking at this and saying, well, it's got bullish indicators. You know, now we're up into like 80 million, 17 million, 9 million. I mean, we're, we're definitely like drying them out. But it wouldn't take much for them to dump the stock if they want to, especially if they made a lot of money, 500% um, on this last run up, okay? Um, they have the equity to do it. So they could drop this thing like they did here, you know, a significant amount. But that being said, do I think that apes have a shot of making this thing squeeze? Um, I'm not really gonna speculate too much on that. I think that the answer is, the short answer is yes, but I think that it's more nuanced than that, which is that I think that the institutions that be, like, they know what they're doing, um, and they are going to do what they can, all right, to make it play out the way that it has played out in the past, which means that, like, these values will respect where the cycles start and end. If we're on an accelerated cycle, then we're not going to have necessarily a respecting of these predictive values. Like, um, but anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I am not a YouTuber. I do not care about the algorithm, but I do care about um, maybe getting this in front of as many eyes as, as we can in, if you're in ATER and if you care about this stock 
on the long term or if you're an ape looking at this stock in terms of moving these shorts out of these and stopping kind of the systematic manipulation of the stock, um, certainly you can like it and share it and let everybody know. Thanks for watching.